little planets. Last little bit. How does the magnetic field affect us? Is the magnetic field important to human beings? This should only take a couple minutes. Is the magnetic field important to human beings? Yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. Our magnetic field is important. Because if our magnetic field were not there, we would all die. Did any of you guys know what would kill us? What does our magnetic field protect us from? What main thing is, is, is out there trying to kill us that our magnetic field protects us from? So the magnetic field can't block asteroids, okay? Asteroids are, are two just large physical objects. What it protects us from is the sun. Remember when we were talking about um, comets? And we talked about how the comet's tail forms and why it points away from the sun? What did I say was coming out of the sun that was causing those tails of those comets to blow away from the sun? You remember, guys remember what that was called? See if you do. The solar wind, right? The solar wind, yes. The sun's breaking wind, yes. The solar wind. Um, the sun is constantly blowing charged particles out in the form of the solar wind. And those are very high energy. And that solar wind makes it all the way to Earth. It makes it all the way to all the planets. And if that solar wind were able to come all the way down to the surface of our planet, that would kill us. But luckily for us, the solar wind is made out of charged particles. And so our magnetic field will actually block it for us. Remember, we said that magnetic fields can be formed by electricity. Well, charged particles are also related to electricity. And it turns out when the solar wind gets to us, solar wind likes to follow magnetic fields. So when that solar wind gets up here to our magnetic field, it's ready to hit Earth, but then it ends up turning and following our magnetic field. And essentially what that does is it makes our magnetic field work like a bubble in that solar wind, protecting us from it. Which also means, remember, I said that Mars had a magnetic field at one point, but because it is cooled off, its core cooled off over time, it lost that magnetic field. Well, guess what's slowly happening to the core of our planet? Guess what's slowly happening to the core of our planet? Ah, oh, it's slowly cooling off. And again, this has nothing to do with global warming. That's a surface thing that has to do with our atmosphere and the heat of the sun. I'm talking about the internal core temperature right here. This is something different. This has nothing to do with global warming. But if, if the core of our planet is cooling off, then what does that mean will eventually happen to our magnetic field? What will eventually happen? Yeah, eventually our magnetic field will turn off. If our planet is allowed to completely cool off in its core, uh, which is something we have nothing to do with, uh, we will eventually die, right? Now, oh, okay, okay. Um, luckily, you don't have to worry about that. That's going to take billions of years, okay? That's going to take billions of years. But it is something that slowly happens. Now, again, nothing to do with global warming. That's later, okay? Now, one quick thing. What's the weakest part of our magnetic field? Where's the weak points? We do have... Let me I'll give you a hint. We have two weak points. Where are those weak points? Yeah, at the North and South Pole. And someone says, everything out there is trying to kill us. 
Yeah, I mean, the space, uh, not a very hospitable place for a human being, right? But yeah, the poles. The poles are the weak point. So sometimes solar wind makes it to our planet at the poles, okay? Sometimes solar wind makes it to our planet at the poles. But give me a yes or no on this. Does the solar wind have a direct hit on the poles? Does the solar wind get to have a direct hit on our poles? Yes or no? And by direct hit, I mean, does it get to come straight out of the sun and just hit our poles? No. Because of the orientation of our magnetic field, any solar wind that makes it to our poles would make it by hitting our magnetic field and being dragged around it and pulled into the poles by our magnetic field. And while it does that, it loses most of its energy. So luckily for us, uh, even if you were standing right at one of the poles, when that solar wind made it in, it's such a low energy that it never makes it to the ground, okay? And even if it did, it, it's pretty low energy by that point. But essentially what's going to happen is that solar wind will hit the air and give its energy to the air, which will cause the air to glow for a short period of time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about right now? Does anybody know what this phenomenon is called? When the solar wind causes that air at the poles to glow. Yeah, this is called an aurora. Also known as the northern and southern lights. Okay? And if you want to know how to spell aurora, that's, that's kind of a hard one to spell. Aurora is A-U-R-O-R-A. -R -R -A, okay? Uh, aurora are just solar wind hitting the air. Now, quick question. Have any of you guys seen this from Florida, if you're in Florida? Have any of you guys ever seen this from Florida? No. Have any of you guys ever seen it at all? Any of you guys ever seen it? I've never actually been in the right place to actually see one of these. Where would you have to go to see these? Yeah, you would be able to see these up in uh, up in Alaska, up in Canada, or if you went down to uh, southern Argentina uh, or Australia, you can see them. So if you go close to the poles, close to the weak points in our, our uh, magnetic field, you can see this really cool light show. And I would re definitely recommend look up some videos of this. Uh, and it's not always green. Sometimes it's red. And the reason it shows up these green and red colors is because our atmosphere is made out of nitrogen and oxygen. And essentially, every substance is going to glow with its own fingerprint. Going back to test one stuff, remember, every substance has a different set of wavelengths it likes to give off. Well, oxygen and nitrogen like to give off these greens and reds, okay? So if we were to go to another planet that has an aurora, would it necessarily be green and red? would we expect the auroras on other planets, aurorae on other planets, to be the same colors as the auroras on Earth? Yes or no? No. Because the atmospheres of the other planets uh are made of other things, their auroras will show up in different colors. So, here's, here's what I want to get at. Which planets have aurorae? Any planet that has an atmosphere and a magnetic field will have aurorae. You need to have both, okay? So we know Earth has an atmosphere and a magnetic field, so we have, an auro we have aurorae, right? Same with all the Jovian planets. All the Jovian planets have atmospheres and they have magnetic fields, so they can have this. I'll actually show you a photograph of some of this happening on other planets when we talk about other planets. 
but theirs light up in different colors because their atmosphere is made out of something different. But here we go. Here we go. Uh, your son is able to answer some of these questions. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job, you. Good job. Thanks for answering my questions. Now, here we go. Check this out. Oh, Liam. Thanks, Liam. Good job on answering those questions. <laughs> All right. Now, um, last question for you guys, and then we'll head out of here. Let's look at the other terrestrial planets and see which ones would have aurorae. We said Earth does. We said Earth does. How about Mars? Would Mars have aurorae? Yes or no? Just give me a yes or no on these. Would Mars have aurorae? Remember, I'll go ahead and tell you this one's no. That's okay. That's okay. This one's no. Remember, we said Mars doesn't have a magnetic field. You need to have a magnetic field and an atmosphere in order to have an aurora, okay? So Mars doesn't have them, uh, at least not in the same form that we do. Okay, how about Venus? Would Venus have an aurora? Yes or no? Remember, it's got to have a magnetic field and an atmosphere. It does have an atmosphere, but it doesn't have a magnetic field. Remember, it rotates too slow. So it's not going to have a magnetic field. And then finally over here, Mercury has a magnetic field. It's weak. It's got a magnetic field. Would Mercury have an aurora? I'm going to go ahead and say no. Why doesn't Mercury get to have an aurora? What's it missing? No atmosphere. Right, right. And the moon also would not have an aurora. So basically, out of the terrestrial planets, the Earth is the only one that gets northern and southern lights. It's the only one that can have aurorae. But the Jovian planets all have an atmosphere and a magnetic field, uh, so they don't. So they, they so uh, so they, <laughs> the Jovian planets do have aurorae because they do have the atmosphere and a magnetic field. Okay. <laughs>